Good evening and welcome to Just the News. I'm Faye D'Souza. We have a lot of news to work through today, so let's get straight to it. The Afghanistan ambassador to India, speaking to NDTV, has said the government of Afghanistan may seek India's military assistance at some point in the future if talks with the Taliban fail. Afghanistan's ambassador, Farid Munmudze, has also gone on to say that the current situation in Afghanistan is very dire and very problematic. With the government forces actively fighting the Taliban in around 150 out of their total 376 districts. He's been quoted saying one third of the country is in an active fight. Over two lakh people have been displaced internally in the country since April this year, with close to 4,000 who have been killed. In a video that was recently verified by CNN, the Taliban shot down 22 commandos of Afghanistan's forces even after they had surrendered. In the video, bystanders can be seen pleading with the Taliban not to execute the commandos, but they were shot anyway. Talking about that incident, Mr. Farid said that we are under the assumption that the Taliban would take the peace process seriously and they would negotiate a lasting, dignified peace with the Afghan government. They, uh, yet, they continue to choose a path of violence, end quote. Earlier this week, remember, India evacuated all diplomats and security personnel from its Kandahar consulate. On to our COVID updates right now. India reported 38,792 new COVID cases, 624 deaths in the last 24 hours. Now, the positive, I, I have good news and bad news on this front. The good news is India's recovery rate is currently 97.28%, which is very good. And the fatality rate uh, is 1.33%. Now, here is the worrying news. Kerala has reported 15,637 new COVID cases, 128 deaths in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate in the state of Kerala is 10.03%, which is extremely high. Kerala has been reporting more than 10,000 cases every day now for a month. Now, Kerala's peak had come down from May. It stayed at about 12,000 for about a week or so. It didn't drop below 12,000. Now it has risen again up to 15,000 a day. And that is something to keep our eye on. According to the United States government, the United States is ready to send three to four million doses of donation vaccines to India, but the Indian government has not completed its legal process yet. Now, this is according to the U.S. State Department spokesperson, Ned Price. He said the U.S. is still waiting for India's nod to dispatch the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines that they have set aside for India. Remember, three to four uh, million doses is 30 to 40 lakh, which is a drop in the ocean of what India needs, but every dose counts at this point. According to PTI, Ned Price has said, and I quote, we are ready to ship the vaccines expeditiously if we are given a green light from the government of India. U.S. vaccines have reached Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh. But for India, it's taking time as there are some legal hurdles for emergency import. Price went on to say, and I quote, before we can ship these doses, however, each country must complete their own domestic set of operation regulatory and legal processes that are specific to each country. Now, India has determined that it needs further time to review legal provisions related to accepting vaccine donations. Uh, Moderna had been approved by uh, India's government or the DCGI on uh, emergency approval, but Pfizer has not applied for emergency approval yet. But remember, several states have been complaining of a shortage of vaccine supply and the vaccine, as we had noted from the COVID data, the rate at which the vaccines are actually uh, being progressed on a daily basis has come down sharply from the beginning of June to mid-June, where we are, were at a peak and now we have fallen to nearly half as much per day. Now, following those reports uh, that several states like Maharashtra and Delhi are facing a shortage of vaccines, the newly appointed health minister of the government of India, Mansuk Mandavia, has said useless statements are being made to create panic. In a tweet in Hindi, he said, and I quote, regarding the availability of vaccine, I have come to know from statements and letters of various state governments, this situation can be better understood by an actual analysis of facts. Useless statements are being made only to create panic among people. He said that 11.4 uh, crore vaccine doses have been made available to state governments in the entire month of June. It's increased to 13.5 crore in July. 
states were also imp- uh, informed about the availability of vaccines every 15 days so he said states very well know when and in what quantity they will get the vaccine doses the central government has done this so they can so the state governments can work on the vaccination from the district level if the center is already giving this information in advance on behalf then we see mismanagement in long queues of vaccine takers it's very clear where the problem is and who is the reason for it or who is the cause for that problem end quote the uttarakhand government had called off the kanwar yatra According to the Indian Express, the Uttar Pradesh government is still planning on going ahead. The Supreme Court has now taken cognizance of Suomoto after reading the Indian Express article and asked for responses from both of these state governments and the central government. Justice Nariman told Solicitor General Tushar Mehta that we read something disturbing that the state of Uttar Pradesh has chosen to continue with the yatra while the state of Uttarakhand in hindsight has decided there's no yatra. Citizens of India are confused, are completely perplexed and they don't know what is going on. all of this in admit all of this the prime minister has said the third wave will strike the nation soon and we cannot compromise even a bit the bench observed that there were different political voices uh, speaking at the same time and they've asked now for responses from both state governments and the central government on this one article next hearing will be held on the 16th of july the yatra begins on the 25th of july an update on the kum mela remember there was an accusation of fake covid tests that had been conducted at the kumbh mela the committee which is investigating the matter has now said that they have completed verification of 60000 phone numbers of visitors who were tested by the laboratories that are currently being investigated committee has said that they still have to contact 35000 other phone numbers and the process is likely to take 10 more days in the meantime according to the hindustan times the special investigative team that has been set up of the haridwar district police is likely to make its first arrest in the next few days remember private laboratories were um, you know tasked with the job of conducting 1 lakh uh, covid tests uh, in the kumbh mela it turns out the many of those covid tests were fake a 20 year old from kerala's thrissur district who was india's first ever recorded covid positive patient has unfortunately tested positive for the virus again In January last year she was among a group of medical students who had been evacuated from Wuhan uh, which was the epicenter of the outbreak according to reports uh, she is not vaccinated and now is in a stable condition and she is asymptomatic this time as opposed to minor symptoms that she had in January last year the indian council for medical research had said that a person may get infected for covid again if the antibodies of that infection uh, wear out after about 5 months after recovery The city of uh, Mumbai has decided that fully vaccinated travelers may enter Mumbai without carrying RT-PCR negative RT-PCR tests if they need to. Mumbai's civic chief Iqbal Singh Chahal has said many passengers are taking up journeys to Delhi for business. They leave in the morning, they come back the same day or the next day. Conducting RT-PCR tests are becoming impossible at this point. Madhya Pradesh will reopen schools for classes 11 and 12 from the 26th of July at 50% seating capacity. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan has announced that colleges will also be opened in a phased manner. Mr. Chauhan had said initially schools will run for four days and later for six days. If all goes well, uh, considering the third wave of the pandemic, if all goes well until the 15th of August, he said we will gradually resume other classes in schools as well. After Uttarakhand and Punjab. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has promised 300 units of free electricity to each family in Goa if Aam Aadmi Party comes to power. Goa is slated to go to polls in February next year. Now, Kejriwal said that 73% of the families in Delhi get a zero electricity bill under the Aam Aadmi Party government and he will replicate the same model in Goa as well. In Uttarakhand he promised free electricity Uh, and announced a waiver of pending bills free power for agriculture and uninterrupted supply if elected in the state on to news now from the world of business online food delivery platform zomato launched its ipo today so this is when a company uh, that has so far only had private investors lists on the stock market and it offers a certain number of shares at a certain price on the stock market and people bid so it's been bid fully 
everything that has been offered has received bids and this is only on f on the first day so there are two more days available at the end of day 1 the shares allotted to qualified institutional buyers were subscribed 98% and retail investors subscribe 2.69%. So that's a good turnout. Uh, the IPO, which is so far India's biggest this year, aims to raise 9,375 crore rupees and will be open 14th, 15th and 16th of July. Ahead of the IPO, the anchor portion, which was uh, open for anchor investors, raised 4,196 crore rupees from 186 anchor investors, which is fairly impressive. In other news, Adani Holdings, Adani Airport Holdings, I beg your pardon, which is a wholly owned unit of Adani Enterprises, has officially taken over the management control of the Mumbai International Airport from the GBK Group. Now, Adani Airports, uh, which is the country's largest airport infrastructure company, controls 25% of all airport passenger traffic in the whole country and 33% of India's air cargo traffic. It also won the bid, remember, to build the brand new Navi Mumbai International Airport, which is the second airport in Mumbai, a greenfield airport. Construction, we understand, will begin next month. Apart from this, Adani has won from the government uh, bids to run the airports of Jaipur, Ahmedabad, Guwahati, Lucknow, Mangalore and Tiruvananthapuram. It plans to defer the takeover of the airports of Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvananthapuram for six months. Uh, because they've currently turned financially unviable because of the pandemic. News now coming in from across the world. The French embassy in Kabul has urged its citizens to leave Afghanistan as the Taliban has taken control of nearly 85% of Afghanistan's territory. In the meantime, former US President George Bush has criticized the withdrawal of NATO troops from Afghanistan and said citizens are being left to be slaughtered by the Taliban. The US and NATO began withdrawing troops from Afghanistan in May this year and is scheduled to complete by September 11th, which is the 20 year anniversary of the 9-11 attacks in the US. This includes 20, uh, you know, 2,500 US troops and 7,500 troops from NATO. Following the arrest of former South African President Jacob Zuma, protests have broken out all across the country which have then turned into riots and then turned into looting that's gone on for several days. The death toll has reached 72 and 1,200 people have been arrested so far. Zuma has started serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court last week. He's, he has been imprisoned for defying the court order to testify before a state-backed inquiry that was investigating corruption during his term as president from 2009 to 2018. An update from the world of sports right now. 20-time Grand Slam winner Roger Federer has withdrawn from the Tokyo Olympics because of a knee injury that he sustained during his grass court season. He tweeted uh, his decision saying, and I quote, During the grass court season, I unfortunately experienced a setback with my knee and I've accepted that I must withdraw from the Tokyo Olympic Games. I'm greatly disappointed. It has been an honor and a highlight of my career every time I have represented Switzerland, end quote. All right, one piece of positive news, but there's a huge spoiler alert for those of you who are tracking MasterChef Australia in its latest season and you haven't watched the finale, stop now, because that's uh, the news that I'm going to give you. Indian origin home cook Justin Narayan was the winner of MasterChef Australia season 13. Uh, he, uh, Justin, who comes, uh, who hails from Western Australia, won the show beating uh, fellow finalists and favourites, Kishwa Chaudhary, who's originally from Bangladesh, and Pete Campbell. Really, for people who are tracking this season, um, it was quite a surprise. Justin was not the hot favourite to win. Justin has won a trophy as well as uh, $250,000, which adds up to more than one crore rupees. Some of his iconic shows, uh, some of his iconic uh, you know, uh, dishes during the show included an onion ice cream, Coke and chips, and at one point he actually served up dal bath. That brings us to the end of uh, this ep episode of uh, the news. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a question to see if you were paying attention to the news. Which company controls most of the airports in India right now? Leave us your answer in the comment section. And the best part about this video is you can always go back and listen again if you happen to miss that piece of information. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.